Good evening and welcome to today's class. Today we'll be talking about arrays. What is arrays? But before we talk about arrays, I want us to go back to something that we learned before. We spoke about variables. So my question will be, what is a variable? When we studied variables, we realized that variables are just containers that are used to store values. Well, we also remember that a variable can only hold one value at a time. What this means is that once you put a value into a variable, let's say you have a container and you're giving the name A to this container. Once you put 5 into the container A and later you decide to assign the value 6 to that same container A, the 5 disappears forever. So, how do we handle situations where we have multiple values that we want to store? This is where arrays comes in. Arrays are also special types of container, but this time instead of having only one compartment to store a value, it has many compartments that are used to store the value. Arrays can therefore store many different values at the same time. One thing we should know about arrays is that arrays can store values of the same type. That means that I cannot have an array, let's just say my array, that is being used to store an integer and then a string at the same time. If the array is declared as of the type integer, then everything that it stores should be of the type integer. If an array is declared as a string, then everything that is stored should be of the type string. I hope it's clear. Well, let's look at some operations that we can perform on an array. First of all, let's look at how to load an initial value into an array. Then we'll look at how to process the elements of an array. We'll also look at how to search an array and then how to write out array content into a report. Let's talk about how to load initial values into your array. Like I said, arrays are simply special type of variables. These are containers that have different compartments. So for you to be able to load values into an array. You don't just assign the value to the array as you would have done in a variable. But then, because you have different compartments, you need to show which compartment within the array you intend to put your value in. So for instance, in the example that you see on your screen, you see that the name of the array is indicated and then the index. The index simply refers to which compartment within the array you intend to put your value. So for instance, if your array is called my array or it's called array, then you say my array into bracket one, indicating that go to the, uh, the array my array and then go to the compartment one and then you assign your value to it. So this is how you assign a value. But remember, because the array consists of different compartments, and these compartments can be many, actually. So the easiest way for you to populate all the compartments when you have to do is by using repetition. By repeating, uh, by repeating this action a number of times, you are able to assign the value to the different compartments within your array. Let's look at the pseudocode on the screen. First of all, we set maximum number to the required value. So this is the variable that is used to keep track of the size of your array. Then you set your index to zero. This index here is just a variable name that we are giving to the variable that will keep track of 
how many times the loop had gone. And this is the same variable that is used to keep track of which index we are currently on within the array. So here, you see that we, because we want to repeat, we use do while. And then in the do while, we put our condition here. The condition says that the input value should exist and the index should be less than the maximum number of elements. And whilst this is true, we get the name of our array, the index of our array, and then assign a value to it. Okay, let us look at how to write contents of an array or how to assess the contents of an array. Like I said, or like I have been saying, arrays are not too different from variables, just that think of arrays as variables that have different compartments. And so if you want to assess the content of an array, it will not be too different from how you assess the content of your variable. For instance, if we had a variable called, let's say, A, and we needed to print the content of the container A, what we would have done is to say print A. But in the case of an array, because it has different compartments, then we need to indicate which compartment within that container do we want to access. So for instance, if I want to print the content of array A, compartment 5, then I would say print A5. So if you look at the example that we have on the screen, you would see that we are writing print array into bracket index. So the array here represents the name of your array and the index here represents the number of the compartment where you want to access. But like I said, array has many compartments and for you to be able to access all of them, you use repetition. So you can use your do while repetition, you can use your repeat until repetition, or you can use your do repetition. In this example, we are using the do repetition. So we are saying that if you start from the first index to the number of elements within the array, and so anytime it repeats, the index would be replaced with the number of the index that we are currently on. So for instance, in doing the first iteration, index will be equal to 1. And so if we want to print, it will print your array and what is at compartment 1. And then it repeats. Then index will move to 2. Then it will print the name of your array at compartment 2. This will continue to happen until the last element within the array is printed. Now let's look at some examples using arrays. In this example, we are required to design a program that will prompt for and receive 18 examination scores from a mathematics test, compute the class average, and display all the scores and the class average to the screen. When you are given an example like this, the first thing you need to do is to approach it by designing your summary table. So this is a sample summary table. We would need our input will be 18 exam scores and then our output will be the 18 exam scores and then the class average what are we required to do from the question we are required to prompt the scores get the scores compute the class average display the scores and then display the class average how do we approach this we start by setting a variable called total score to zero then, first of all, if we want to prompt, we need to know how to prompt. We need to know how to receive the scores from uh, the user. And then we need to know how to calculate. So let's see how we do it for an individual. First, by prompting, you use a keyword prompt. So we prompt for score. And then we get the score. But because we are going to do this for 18 students. We have to repeat this 18 times. And by repeating it 18 times, we use the do command. So let's use the do loop. We say do index starting from 1 to 18, right? Meaning that we are starting from 1, we'll stop at 18. And then when the index is equal to 1, 
will prompt for the score will get scores remember scores here is the name of our array so we'll get scores one when index is equal to one we'll get scores one and then after getting scores one what do we need to do we we'll can calculate the total by adding whatever we have received which is scores index to whatever we have in total score so this is what is going to happen in our first iteration total score will be equal to zero so we'll start index from one we'll prompt the operator please enter the score the operator will enter a score that score will be received and it will be put into the array scores compartment one then after we are done with that we now take what we put in the array scores compartment one add it to what is already in total score which would have been zero and so we add the two together and then the answer will be stored inside the container total score then we repeat now index will be equal to two so for instance at index two we'll prompt the operator to enter another score then we'll receive whatever the operator enters now we are not going to store it at compartment one because index is equal to two we are going to store it into the array score compartment two then we'll add whatever we have received to what is already in total score and the answer will be stored in total score so this will continue to happen until we have gone through all the 18 examination scores once this is done our uh, our loop would stop and then move to the next line of action the next line of action says that we should calculate the average score how do we calculate the average score by dividing the total score by the total number of examination scores that we receive which is 18 so the total score divided by 18 would give you the average score when this is done then now we can go through the array again to display the content of each compartment within the array how do we display we display by right using the keyword display the array name and then the index or the compartment which we want to access so if we need to do this 18 times we just wrap this command or this instruction in a loop and so once it loops 18 times we will display all the 18 scores 